One of the primary objectives of SpaceX is to make humanity multiplanetary. Through pursuit of this endeavor, they have redesigned rocketry through their Starship and its booster, named Super Heavy. But how will this rocket get to Mars? In this animation, we will look at the differences between the two planets, how long it would take to get to Mars, and why you can only go to Mars every few years. Both Mars and Earth have quite a few similarities. Mars has a day length similar to Earth's. It takes 24 hours and 37 minutes for Mars to complete one full rotation on its axis. This period is often referred to as a Sol on Mars. Mars also has an axial tilt of approximately 25 degrees, similarly to Earth's tilt of 23.4 degrees. This means that just like Earth, Mars has seasons. Because Mars is further from the Sun, it does not have to be going as fast as Earth to maintain its orbit. This results in Mars going 6 kilometers slower than Earth every second, causing Mars to lag behind as you can see here. Because of Mars's much larger orbit, while it takes Earth 365 days to orbit the Sun, one year on Mars is 687 days. Because the two planets orbit at different speeds, the distance between Earth and Mars can vary from 54.6 million kilometers if they are on the same side of the Sun, and can go up to 400 million kilometers if they are on the opposite sides of the Sun. This difference in speeds results in Earth passing Mars every 26 months. And only at this time does a launch window open where it's feasible to travel from one planet to the next. Another thing to note is the eccentricity of Mars's orbit. Even if the planets are next to each other in their respective orbits, depending on where Mars is, the distance between them can range from 54 million kilometers at the closest to 102 million kilometers, even though they are on the same side of the Sun. But regardless of this additional distance, whenever the planets are about to pass each other, a launch window opens where Starship and its booster can be prepared for flight. Starship, fully stacked, has a total mass of 5 million kilograms or 11 million pounds. During launch, at T minus 2 seconds, Starship lights 33 Raptor engines sequentially, creating 74,000 kilonewtons, or nearly 17 million pounds of thrust. Starship has an estimated payload capacity of up to 100 people as well as 100 tons of cargo brought to the surface of Mars. When the booster is expended, or nearly out of fuel, Starship will light its engines while still connected to the booster. This is known as hot staging. This results in minimal loss in velocity and ensures the fuel in the Starship is pressed against the bottom of the fuel tanks where it will flow to the engines. As the booster heads back to Earth, Starship will continue to raise its orbit. It will then rendezvous with the second Starship to replenish its fuel in preparation for its trans-Mars injection. Now we are ready to head to Mars. The red ring around Earth represents the Starship's orbit. Let's look at the orbital maneuver required to go from this orbit to Mars. Well, we first have to leave Earth's strong gravity well. As we fire our engines, our orbit will grow on the opposite side of our orbiting body. If you'd like to brush up on fundamental orbital mechanics, I recommend watching this video first to help understand why our orbit grows in this manner on the opposite side of Earth. As we increase our velocity, our orbit will grow as you can see here. Our orbit will grow more and more elliptical until we achieve escape velocity. Earth's escape velocity is just over 40,000 kilometers an hour. At this point, Starship will no longer orbit the Earth, but orbit the Sun, just as other planets do. As the Starship continues to fire its engines, its orbit will continue to grow more eccentric. The goal is to get the tip of your orbit, or the apoapsis of your orbit, to intersect with Mars's orbit. You now have a set trajectory to Mars, and this trip is estimated to be around 6 months. When reaching Mars, Starship can use the heat shield that covers one half of Starship to slow down in the thin Martian atmosphere. This is known as a belly flop maneuver. Once slow enough and close enough to the landing zone, it can relight its engines and perform the flip maneuver to cancel out the remaining velocity and orient itself to land. This orbital maneuver used to get to Mars is known as a Hohmann transfer. 
and it is one of the most fuel efficient ways to travel between two circular orbits. But there is a very similar yet faster way to get from Earth to Mars. All we have to do differently is to continue to fire our engines past our prior trajectory, continuing to grow our orbit. The higher our velocity, the further the apoapsis will be. At a velocity resulting in a three month trip to Mars, so twice as fast, our apoapsis will be at Jupiter's orbit. But this path requires much more fuel. Also, this out of velocity would have to be dealt with on arrival to Mars. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.